update. What my 37 male wife 37 female did during our separation makes me want to make it permanent. Original post. My wife and I have been married for six years. We have no children. Last July, tensions were high between us. I'm an essential worker. I work the night shift and sleep during the day while she's at work. She was working from home due to COVID and was very loud. This kept waking me up and making me a very crabby person. So I was admittedly very short with her and she was not accommodating to me at all. As a result, the time we did have together was very tense between us. It's normally a very happy time, but we weren't able to enjoy it at all. We made a decision to do a trial separation, both go to therapy separately and try couples therapy after a few months. As my company was frontline, they offered to put us up in a hotel so as not to risk our families, so I took advantage of this and moved out. I asked my wife for ground rules. My exact wording was, so that I understand this, are we seeing other people during this time? She angrily replied, if that's the first place your mind goes, then maybe it's not even worth it. I want to save our marriage. I won't give you an opportunity to go screw around. I apologized and assured her that I only wanted to understand where we stood. So over the past year, I've been in therapy. I talked to my boss and got my shift at work changed to day shift because I realized that the night shift was really taking a toll in my mental health. I've learned to be firm, but open and communicative and not bottle things up. I honestly feel so much better about myself as a person. My wife and I started couples counseling at the beginning of this year, and it's been really great for us. We both were open about what was wrong, both recognized the faults that we had and both committed to wanting to make things better. We made a decision for me to move back in next month and bring the separation to an end. During our most recent session, our counselor asked if I had completely broken off any relationships that I had during our separation. I replied I didn't have any relationships during our separation. We established ground rules that this wasn't about having fun with other people. It was about getting better for our relationship to survive. But then my wife replied we never established that as a ground rule. I quoted her words back to her, and she responded, well, I was letting you know that that should be your main focus. I mean, if you were just going to go fool around with random women and not try to improve yourself, then there was no point in trying to save things. I responded, so you were using weasel words to have things both ways. Did you date anyone? She unashamedly stated that she had slept with seven men during the past year, that it was perfectly allowed, and I was free to be with someone else if I so choose. She stated that if I didn't want that, I should have clearly stated it. I countered that when I tried to broach it, but she got angry and shut the subject down. I doubt she was trying to rewrite history. I told her at this point, I need to think if I want to move in again or even try anymore because it's clear that she treated last year as a free pass to sleep around on me. She says that I need to grow up and get over it. I responded, see, that's where you're wrong. I don't need to do either of those things. I just need to get over you and after today, I feel like that's going to be the easier thing to do. She insists that I'm in the wrong on this and that when you're separated, it's completely understood that you're free to see other people. Honestly, this behavior, the weasel words, deliberately ambiguous statements, and a constant deflection are the things that triggered me to blow up at her in the past, and the fact that it's still happening is just leading me to feel like I need to file for divorce and walk away. Am I making too much of this? I feel like I've made so much progress in therapy and I know she has too, but I just feel disgusted every time I look at her. I feel like she cheated on me, and I get so angry. I don't know if there is any way to move forward with her. She keeps saying she did everything right and I need to stop trying to punish her because I didn't explore while I could. Would I be the worst person in the world for filing for divorce at this point? I feel like I'm too close to this situation and can't think straight. What the hell do I even do at this point? I've been working for a year to fix my marriage, and I thought she was too. Now I feel like we've been working on opposing teams. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Divorce and move on. No trust, and that will eat you alive. It causes you to be paranoid 24-7, and you'll think you're insane and crazy when you are not. Second that, be smart and careful of the manipulation going forward. My husband's ex and he split up, and she moved another guy in the day he left. After a few weeks, they had a chat about bills, etc., and she told him if he wanted to try again, he wouldn't have a chance if he slept with anyone else while they were apart. She was living with someone else. How does that work in anyone's mind? He quite rightly walked away and didn't look back. We met over a year later, and when we got engaged, she texted him saying it proved he never really loved her. 
They were together for 10 years, and he wasn't the one who cheated. She was so delusional she thought he would hang around single waiting for her to crook her fingers. And by this time, she was married with a baby, but still thought of him as a backup. He wanted no contact as they had no children and didn't have anything to link them. She tried to be besties with my stepdaughter and even complained to me that my stepdaughter didn't want to hang out and she felt cut off. I spoke to my stepdaughter as this woman was in her life for a long time and that if she wanted to hang out, I would understand. She told me the ex wasn't very nice to her and played mind games and the last thing she wanted was this woman to be in her life. All contact was cut off there and then. If you ask the ex, I'm sure she'd tell you I'm the evil other woman who got between her and her man. I didn't even meet him until they'd been over for more than a year. She spoiled both relationships herself, but still won't have it that she's not a victim in this. She definitely cheated. She got upset at you for bringing up sleeping with other people. So she wanted commitment during the separation and she cheated on you during that commitment. Just move on and be happier. She obviously will only bring you misery. She definitely cheated. Seven times. Seven. No, seven dudes. Seven isn't even the number of times she slept with each dude. Update. I've gotten a few requests for updates and as much as I'm embarrassed over this whole thing, I think it helps to get it out. We are getting divorced. Shortly after the big revelation, our counselor asked to speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. She told me, you need to walk away for your own health. You've made so much progress and so many positive changes. This won't work unless you're both trying. And Tina is not trying. This can't be all on you because she will keep dragging you back down. My counselor told me that she was crossing a line by telling me what to do. But she literally could not sleep after finishing up our session and seeing the look in my face. When I thought about it, she's right. I've been using this time to become a better, more rounded person. While my wife has been using it as a free pass to act like a teenager, it has kept up the deceitful gaslighting behaviors that plagued our marriage for far too long. When I told my wife it was over, she broke down sobbing. She begged me not to leave, told me that I could have a free pass to go do what I wanted to get even, and swore that if I had been clear, she never would have touched another man. I have to admit, I felt myself wanting to say yes because for a second she was the woman I fell in love with again. But it was just a second that I knew would end, and we'd be back to walking in eggshells and playing head games soon enough. I told her that we both deserved better than the people we had been to each other, and the fact that she thought I wanted revenge and still blamed me for her actions told me that she hadn't learned to be better. She told me she'd do anything to make it work, and ask what I wanted to see from her. I told her that I had seen everything I needed from her, and if she could only be better when divorce became a reality, then she had not made the progress I believed she had before that session. I served her with papers that I'm moving forward with a divorce. She's asked me to please resume counseling sessions, but I've refused. I know it's the right decision, but I feel very conflicted. There's something inside me that feels like I'm doing wrong, even though I know it's the only way I'll eventually be happy. I just read the first post. Not gonna lie, when she tried to twist what the rules of the separation were after the fact, it had my blood boiling. I'm glad you have seen the light, and trying to save the marriage was a fool's endeavor. Good luck moving forward. I know, right? I read the first post and was absolutely blown away by how crappy of a person she is. Not gonna lie, when she tried to twist what the rules of the separation were after the fact, it had my blood boiling. Not only that, but admitting she slept with seven different people during a pandemic. Clearly a raging narcissist, reinforced by the fact that the remorse only came when Opie told her he wanted a divorce. She didn't think she could possibly be in the wrong at any point, up until she had to face direct consequences for her actions. Your counselor is a true MVP. Never saw that coming. Also, she begged me not to leave told me that I could have a free pass to go do what I wanted to get even, and swore that if I'd been clear, she never would have touched another man. Even at that point, she couldn't admit she was wrong, and tried to blame it on you again. Your counselor was right. Your ex is a terrible person. I mean, she even said herself that the separation was to work on saving the marriage and not to see other people. It doesn't matter how she tries to frame it after the fact. Because I'd take her actions during the separation, which she still takes no accountability for, as her not having any interest in saving the marriage. Only my opinion, but I believe until death do we part. And I hope it works that way for you. Just read your first post and I was disgusted by your ex-wife's behavior. 
I can't imagine actually living through that situation. I know it must be tough, but you're doing the best thing for yourself. And you should take some pride in making that kind of hard decision. Now for the last story. Wife of eight years acting erratically. Wants to end marriage, but won't because she isn't financially independent. My 34 male wife, 30 female, works previously, but has been a stay-at-home mother to our five-year-old for the last five years. We own a house and I have worked 50 to 60 hours a week to provide everything we need in my income alone. Our marriage has been great. Sure, we have had our fights, but nothing that wasn't reconciled basically immediately. Two weeks ago, the neighbor directly across the street whom we've never really met asked my wife if she could drop off and pick up her granddaughter from school, same school as my daughter goes to because her and her son, 28 male, that lives with her are having a hard time adjusting their schedules to do it themselves. My wife agrees to do it, and this nightmare begins. After a week, my wife has spent some time talking to the grandmother and child and finds out the kid is in a pretty bad situation. Her dad comes and goes as he pleases. Her mom is rarely around, so the grandmother basically raises her. I've never met her dad, but from my home, I've witnessed him screaming at the kid at his mom in their driveway slash lawn. I watched as he threw all the kid's mother's belongings on the lawn at 3 a.m. Disrupts the neighborhood with loud music from his car whenever it comes and goes at all hours. Drives erratically. I just don't get the sense he's an outstanding citizen. His mother also tells my wife he battles with depression and anxiety, which is the reason for his outbursts. In a way, my wife tells me that she feels bad for the kid and doesn't mind watching her to get her away from the drama at home, and I agree. One night, my wife walks the girl over to her dad when he gets home and comes back to tell me the guy was yelling and berating both of them for reasons she didn't know. This past Tuesday, I get home from work at around 5 p.m. My wife says she's taking our daughter and the neighbor kid to get their nails done. Two hours later, I haven't heard from her, so I call and get no answer. This goes on for around 30 minutes, then she texts me and says she's meeting the girl's dad at the mall to give him his daughter. Because of him being aggressive toward them a couple days before, this gets me concerned. So I try and call again but get no answer. The mall isn't far, so I ride over to see if I spot them and they are not there. I drive around a little and spot my wife's vehicle in a different parking lot. I park and walk up, it's just her and our daughter inside. I get a deer and headlights look, and she immediately starts saying she's not happy and she's done with our marriage. She admits she had been walking around a mall with the girl's father talking. I get her to drive back home and things go further off the rails. She is flipping out telling me I overreacted, and there was no reason to come find her. I tried to explain I was concerned because the guy was talking crazy to her in the past and supposedly struggles with mental health issues, and she tells me he never yelled at her the night she said he did. She told me that to throw me off and lead me to believe she wouldn't be around him. She eventually says she is going over to their house because she doesn't want to be near me and leaves my daughter and I at home. By this time, it was around 10 p.m. She never came back home until 5 a.m. The next few days are very strange. Wednesday started with everything calm and normal, but by that evening, she's telling me I'm not welcome at her family's Thanksgiving dinner, and she goes back to their house that evening for a couple hours. The time she does spend at home, she's on her phone texting him constantly and gets very defensive if I mention anything about the situation. Thanksgiving morning, everything is calm again and end up going to dinner with the family in the days as normal as ever. Friday, we get up and go shopping for a while and have a great morning. On the way home, she says she's going out with a lady and her son that night. I push back, questioning why and explain how confused and hurt I am, and she basically doesn't want to hear it. So that night, I take my daughter to see a movie and to hang out with some friends and their kids afterward. Get home around 9, and my wife is home already, acting as if everything is normal. Saturday goes smooth, then in the evening, completely out of the blue, she tells me she wants me to stay somewhere else that night or she's leaving. Like an idiot, I tell her I will go, because deep down I don't want to send her out into the night going who knows where. She tells me to take our daughter with me. So I get a hotel room and try to play it up to my daughter as we are just having a fun night staying in a hotel, eating snacks and watching movies. When I got home Sunday morning, I sent our daughter to church with my mother-in-law, and we sat down to talk. She says she has felt unappreciated for a long time and has put her life on hold to raise our daughter. She is tired of it and wants to have fun and would leave if she had any income or a place to go, but can't go anywhere because she will have nothing. I tell her I love her more than anything, and I'm willing to do whatever I need to salvage what we have if it is at all possible. She says she doesn't know what she wants. She might just be going through a phase. I offer up the suggestions that from now on, no one is forced to leave the house 
Our daughter's sense of normalcy in the home is prioritized, and I will stay on a different level of the house to give her space and privacy for the time being. She asks me if I'm willing to continue handling the finances the way we always have. We have a joint account, and she takes care of paying the bills. As far as the people across the street, she says there are new interesting people she's getting to know, who also have an interest in her and she enjoys their company. Apparently, the first night she went over, she painted me as some raving lunatic husband who was ready to turn the town upside down to find his wife, and they have no desire to meet me because of this. She tells me she doesn't have feelings for the dad. Last night, after our daughter went to bed, she went back across the street. I had to return to work from holiday this morning, so she texted me saying to let her know when I was leaving and she would come back over, which she did. This is all so uncharacteristic of her, but I'm baffled by how in a span of five days, my life has turned completely inside out. I want to work in our marriage and I'm willing to give her space to think, but it is destroying me inside to stay in a home with a woman who out of the blue wants to leave, but won't because she is not financially independent. Should I give her time to think and continue to pay for everything? I feel cast away to my basement and can't even look out the front window without seeing the home she would rather be at than our own. It also seems like she no longer cares to have our daughter. She has always been a great mother, but acts annoyed by everything all of a sudden. I just don't know what to do about any of this. I don't want to do anything to push her further away, but am I supposed to continue to eat crap and swallow politely so she can live out this new scenario? It hurts so bad. I want to hang in there, but it's like the moment my nerves settle, something crazy happens. I'm open to any advice I can get. I feel like I can't go to any of our friends or family because I'd rather keep it quiet for now, and it's hard to carry this around on my own. Could she be on some substance? This seems really extreme. That or she's cheating. I don't know why else should go on extended visits with the abusive dad. Staying over at his house, hiding things from Opie. It sounds like substance use or an affair. For sure. Could definitely be an affair or both. The reason I thought these is because the abuse of dad's behavior sounds like the behavior of someone out of their gourd on it. You need advice from an actual lawyer where you live. Don't leave the house anymore. It can look bad for you down the line. This behavior is very concerning, and it does not seem like she plans to stop. I am no doctor, but people have gone insane in a pandemic. A lot less going on, especially for a stay-at-home parent, I would believe. She may have been sliding off the rail slowly and then something exciting happens and trigger her. I would do a good search of the house and electronics to look for substances, evidence of cheating or anything that can explain this. Again, talk with a lawyer. Maybe separation can be good, but make sure you do it by the book and not in a way that can make you lose custody. Right now, you have an unstable partner at your hands. She's not well mentally, but she understands very well that she's in a horrible spot financially. I'm not saying she will pull some shady and or illegal crap, but she has motivation to do so. A lawyer can help you minimize the chance for her to do that. It is not really about your relationship, but to protect your child. Anything can happen at this point, so set up extra protection on your accounts and electronics. Secure irreplaceable items, imported documents, etc. Thank you for the advice. I'll be seeking out soon. The hardest slash most confusing part for me is how hot and cold she is. It's like she wants to act as if everything is normal, communicate respectfully, try and make me feel better, but as soon as her phone goes off and she starts talking to him or his mom, it all goes up and she doesn't want anything to do with me, 